Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy Corey G. That's at Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole fucking Susack. Stephen Chang's in the house. Our resident college guy came back swole up this year. Yeah, he's fucking yoked. Way more yoked. <laughs> fucking good work, <laughs> Stephen. Yes, you are. I got stacks working. Yes, sir. Look, we we always like when the young cats are asking questions and we can help out. We're going back to some early material that was impactful to me. It's been impactful to everyone at this table with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And uh, Cole, what's your thoughts, brother? Where are we going to start at? Yeah, so um, I would say for most of us here, Rich Dad, Poor Dad was probably like the first book we've read about financial literacy. For sure. Right? Mm-hmm. And probably the most impactful. And our homie Steven, you know, he's he's on the grind. He's trying to better himself. <laughs> and now he's hooked on Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Love it. And we've been talking motherfucking assets. You know, right now... Assets, big talk, getting money. Steven's trying to get swole. <laughs> Assets, big so, talk. So first off, I just want to I want to put this out here because Steven was like, you know, can you help me? Like, I don't really understand the assets, liabilities, stuff like that. Yeah. And there's a you quote can, in We here. can never talk about that stuff enough. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. And there's a quote in here that says, an asset puts money in my pocket, a yep. liability takes money out of my pocket. Easy. Any thoughts on that? Well, yeah, because I think, like, especially growing up in the Ohio Valley – Number one, I thought a car was an asset. You know what? Guy, you know, at the coal mine gets a new truck. It's got $700 payment. And you're like, hey, I own this truck. Well, and the reality is you don't own the truck. The truck's not making you any money. It's at, Now, right now in history, this is the only time your car is actually worth more than it was when you bought it. That's <laughs> the only, this is because we got a fucked up thing going on right now. But the reality is all the way till literally pandemic year, it was your car is going down in value and it's costing you money every month. So that's the double fucking whammy with the claw. <laughs> the one figure claw. That's the yeah. one figure claw, Danny. <laughs> so you're super fucked because you're losing money and it's actually costing you money and your overhead is X. So like at the end of the day, if the car was being rented, like what's that Airbnb but car thing? Like Turbo. There's a company that uh, says yeah, like, I, all right. I think it's Turbo. You know what I mean? So like the rolls is sitting around. I could rent it to somebody for $300 a day. Then that now flipped from a liability to an asset. And so when you don't really understand those basics, you as a person, me, when I'm going to buy something, I don't really know the difference. So I might be taking on liabilities and creating more fuckery for myself and not even know it because I don't understand the basics. And I think that's how people get themselves in trouble because they keep buying shit that's costing them money, whether they want to look cool or they think they deserve it, whatever it is. And then they run up their credit card bill a little bit because they're spending money they don't have. And all of a sudden there's a pressure cooker that just starts to fucking squeeze you. So, and then you, and yeah. then you start to do things that you wouldn't do for long term, for short term to survive. And I and I've been there before. I've done that to myself like early in, in the day. So it's like you've got to just understand like when I'm ta- when I bought the Rolls Royce and and it had a payment it doesn't anymore, but when I bought it, I knew I was buying a liability. But I had to say, do I know when that payment comes out? I had no clue. It had to be to that level that I was buying something extravagant that was a liability to that level that would not ever phase my bank account. That's how it had to be. And so, like, I never used to think like that. But that's literally how – if I had to be like, it's coming out on the 7th, then I don't need to be buying that liability. You know what I mean? So that's the way that I process it. So that's my thoughts. Cool. That's pretty good. Thank you. Um, uh, he talks about in this book that, like, most people, they think that whenever they get the next raise or they get more income, that that will solve their issues. But he talks about most people, whenever they get start making more money, they start spending even Lifestyle more Lifestyle creep. Money. Just multiplies. Yeah, exactly like that. Yeah. So, so you've done a great job at this just because we've talked a lot about that. Like, as Cole continued to make more money, he never changed his overhead. He just didn't until he just got out the trap house, which now Kyle lives in, which yeah. is amazing. Passed it on to Kyle. <laughs> But the reality is like when you do that, it's like then there's no difference because all of a sudden you got a raise and now you're making, let's just make up a number, $2,000 extra a month. Well, then when you get into a bigger crib or you buy the next Beamer, now you're the old way you were making 600 a month extra. Well, now you're still making, like nothing's changed, right? So it's like instead of doing that, look at what can that thousand represent long term for me? We talk about infinite and finite, right? It's the long game, not the short game. If I put that thousand into Amazon, it just split, and I forget about it for 20 years. What the fuck does that that thousand turn into? 
could turn into fucking a hundred thousand. So it's like, but understanding that you can, you can have things right now, but you have to always be thinking about what can I do with that extra money? That's not a liability that sucks, sucks it dry to go to something that can be long term for me. I wasn't always really good at this stuff. I, I learned it early, but didn't apply it till after I was a 10 years in business. And started to understand, like, because I was always feeding into my businesses, right? Which I still am to a certain point. But when there was excess, then I actually knew what to do with it finally. So mm-hmm. Joe had a lot to do with that too. For sure. Lifestyle creep will get you. Yeah. yeah. I, so. I mean, that's what he calls it the rat race, right? Yeah. I mean, it, you pretty much are putting yourself in a hole to begin with, and then it's impossible to get ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was in that for a, like a very minor uh, degree, I think, and just for a brief amount of time. But, and then it switched to, making a point to, to get out of it as fast as possible and then yeah every time you get a raise then you just allocate it towards and uh like whatever you're investing in or you're just bumping those numbers up so you can compound stuff quicker well right? investing isn't that you have to have a certain amount of money i wish i knew this right because i would have invested way earlier i was able to well time. first first off with compounding interest you can't really speed it up mm-hmm. like i was able to jump ahead a little bit just because i had excess at a point but the reality is if I would have had less for a longer period of time, I'd be further ahead because I just didn't yeah. know and apply it. That's what you're talking about with Andon. You yeah. Gave that example oh, yeah, not long dude. Ago, right? Yeah, of course. Like, Tell him what he said. It, yeah. <laughs> I mean, in, yeah. Right? I mean, Joe sat down with Andon. So Joe's my financial advisor. It's been on here. He's, he works with a bunch of us. And Andon, you know, bought um, GameStop on accident. It flew up to four. We sold it at forty dollars a share because I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I should ask Trey. Obviously, I fucked myself. <laughs> but he still made two grand off. He bought it for eight dollars or something like that with his birthday money. At, w- at what age? Yeah, he's he's fucking ten. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean. So and then he goes. We sit down with Joe, and he said, "Joe, he goes. You know, I like Toyota. I like Dad's truck. I'd like to buy some of that. I like. Uh, he's like." Dad, should I buy some airlines? And Joe's like, well, you should buy Boeing. Boeing's the one to make because it was way down. We bought one of those. He wanted to buy Nike. And then he, and Joe goes, Anna, let me explain to you. When this compounds from right now till you're 50 years old, and you put in, I forget the number, is a minimal amount, like way less than you think. Each year, as you get older, you're going to be worth $1.4 million. He came out of that thing like, <laughs> yeah, you already know he's, yeah, yeah, yeah he, his confidence is already there. So... If he thinks he's going to be rich, too, we're really fucked, Danny. I mean, he's, already, <laughs> he's already drawing wieners on the sidewalk. But, so we're good. but if you just think about – yeah, fuck, that's a whole nother. But if you think about just even – I know he doesn't all the way understand it, yeah. but just that little bit of talk at that point. For sure. So – and then he sees me executing, and then when I can explain it and his brother's into finance, too, like that's just a whole different thing. So impactful. Yeah, it's super yeah. impactful. So when you guys are, like, talking about stuff like that, like – emotions are going to be involved like emotions are like something that's like part of everyday living it's like how something that um was brought up in the book it's like Mm -hmm. it's using um let's see it's using emotions kind of like to thinking with emotions Mm -hmm. or using emotions to think that was the quote Mm -hmm. so like when you're using emotions to think like how name a time where it's like okay like you were using your emotions like in the right way that's opened like more opportunities for you or Mm -hmm. like name a time where it's like that kind of like impacted you negatively and like how you were able to like learn and grow from there. Mm. Trey, you want to take on that? Yeah. You've been um, smoking, kid. You've been smoking. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess like a, a, of like a really good example of like a negative like ex- example of that would be, let's say you're trading stock and you entered a trade and the trade goes down 40% mm. and, you're, and when you're, your emotion would come in and you're like, well, fuck, I lost 40% of my money and let's say it's only been an hour or something and let's say three more hours go by though and that stock and the stock price ends up going up, mm. and it go and you know you could have made like two times your money basically. With the emotion aspect of that is when it's down that forty percent, you know like you got to be able to control your emotions where it's like, is this loss like if I take this loss is it actually going to go down more? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you got to like being able to control your emotions. Do you actually be- do you actually have conviction in the trade and stuff like that? So like being able to handle your emotions like when you're just dealing with any investment in the first place is mm-hmm. like a huge key because like if something goes down you don't wanna, you don't want to be the person that panic sells yeah and then on the flip side though too if something's going up you don't want to be the person that fomos in you mean that buys it because oh shit it's going up i want to make money yep. and then you accidentally like actually bought the top of the like top of the price or something like that you know what i mean i was so ba- like, i was bad at this early yeah. so like being able to like handle your emotions 
knowing like having actual conviction and whatever the trade is or anything like that is like such a huge key because like you might psych yourself out of a position that could have changed your life mm. just like amc right yeah yeah <laughs> well you know what so what joe kind of got me with this um i remember i called him with that early when i started investing with him and, so, and a bunch of shit was down i called him he's like Corey, you know here's here's the calls i don't get very often which makes people rich when it's down, you're buying. He's like, and, he, and, and he said, yeah, somebody told me one time when there's blood in the streets, that's when you got to be buying. Like, when it's red as a motherfucker, it's on sale. And so then, during the pandemic, I never changed my investing approach. I never took any money out. I was putting a significant amount in every month, and I was buying all the shit that I believed was down. And guess what? It's all fucking green as a motherfucker right now. But it was hard to go in there when everyone else is like... Fearful fearful yeah and you're going nah put 30 racks on oke yeah motherfucker yeah. let me get them dividends Levels. <laughs> yeah Levels. you know what i mean so, so when it's you're like about to like pull the move like that say mm-hmm. like like you said just pull put 30 racks on it yeah. you know it's like how do you like trust yourself or like trust joe mm-hmm. um like where does that preparation come into place i think um a couple things like look i'm still new and in investing but i'm battle tested in business so, like, at the end of the day, when I make a decision, I just make it, and then I figure it out. So, I'm not going to, like, if it went down, it's the, but also, you got to remember, it's all relative. So, at that point, 30000 doesn't make me not be able to pay my rent. Well, I didn't have a rent at that point, I don't think. But you know what I'm saying? So, it's like, it's all relative. So, you have to, when you're making decisions like that, I got to know that if I'm real wrong, this doesn't really change the way I operate. But if I'm right, and I was... Then it could. Now I've been wrong. This I've got some crypto plays I've been wrong on, but but the, the, you know to be continued still. Yeah. But the reality is like I look at it like once it's there, it's gone. Once I made this move, did the buyout, got the building, I'm in. And I have to I have to work hard enough or have the agility enough to make it the right call no matter what. Now with there has been stocks where I've said you know what. I'm still down 10 grand. It doesn't look like nothing. None of the research that's coming out looks like it's coming. Could I take that L, mini L, and put that 20 into something I think is going to be 40? I've done that before. You know what I mean? So it's not, you're not, I'm not always fucking winning, but when I make those decisions, I'm making them with two different kind of mindsets. Does this change my situation if I lose it all? And, you know, can I just battle the emotions to your point of like believing long term that it's going to come back around? I mean, when the dividends were reinvesting on OKE during the pandemic, I had bought it originally at $72. I was getting dividends reinvested at 12, 20, yeah. putting in big money at 25, 30, you know, and shit went back to 70. So that's just like a good example, and it pays really well dividends. So I don't know. It's like yeah. I think like it's tough. I think like what it is is like one is you just you just have to actually have conviction in what you're investing your money in. It's a real and decision. I, yeah, and you when make I say it. like you actually have the con- like have conviction conviction that like you have to like do the research yourself. That yeah. like it can never be as simple as like someone like walking in and telling you like hey, you should check out, like, hey, you should buy this stock at this price, or hey, you should do this, or you should do X or Y yeah. or Z or whatever. Like, you have to be the person then that takes that information then goes and does the research and actually figures out, like, yeah, I actually should do this, and I'm actually comfortable putting my money, like, into there. Yep. And then, like, too, mm-hmm. though, like, another thing, like, just to sum it all up, like, you, like, you shouldn't invest, like, more money than you're, like, able, able, to, able to lose or, like, yes. if it's going to, like, affect your lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. if, you're gonna, if it's going to affect your lifestyle then you're investing like too much money that might have been maybe the smartest thing i said yeah. and that's probably why i feel that way yeah. right and i have done things where it's pushed the limits on that where i was like eh, probably should put a little less in that you know what i mean so i've done both that's what i'm saying i've fucked up a lot more shit than i got right which is why then i had time involved to get it even more right so like there, there's definitely been some some messed up stuff and a lot of times with my investing i'm not doing like a lot of real risky stuff i have like one thing that's risky and the rest of the stuff is pretty normal i would say yeah so and uh, one thing we were talking about the other day was like we talk about having the money to invest in like to that will fuck up your lifestyle but most people don't even have like the lifestyle part figured out mm. like some people are their lifestyle they're spending so much like their cla- their cash flow their expenses are so much they don't even think about i should invest extra money yeah to where what i kind of did was when i was starting out I never wanted to put myself in a fucking hole to where if an opportunity came up, I couldn't go invest in it. Or I didn't want to take on like, 
you know, a car payment or something like that, that would basically take away from me investing. Mm. I always put, because we talk about minimize your bonage, I wanted to invest <laughs> as so much good. as possible to cover my ass. And then anything after that, if, if I can afford it, cool, but I'm not going to go impulsively make this car payment. Now that now I'm taking away money from investing, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, no, so that's great. One like real time example right now, like I'm buying a house right now. Mm -hmm. We close on it next month. So just had a baby pucker, six, pucker six time months, six months ago right right yeah <laughs> uh, yeah right um and so we were presented with the dilemma of like does does my wife stay home and not go back to work does she change jobs does she stay in the same job all this stuff and so we laid it all out like on a like a google sheet like literally a to z expenses what's coming in what's going out and everything and then you know just had wh which with the significant other that can go one of two ways mm. i feel like um, thankfully I'm with the right person that understands that and I can talk to that stuff or talk about that stuff with. And so pretty much we landed on, all right, you're, I mean, at least in the immediate future, the next like year or two, she's, you know, going to keep working. But the big reason why was because, and I told this straight up to her was that I don't want to hit pause on anything or have to reduce anything that is going to anything investing Long -term. related Love or, that, or Danny. investing yeah. or saving. Love and that. so she was immediately on board with that. So, that, that was the first thing. And then the second thing I keep talking – or uh, when Cole was talking right there was uh, there's another book called uh, I Will Teach You to Be Rich. And so his big thing is like, is, like, what is your version of, like, what a rich life is? So – and basically, like, everyone always talks about, like, getting the $5 coffee. Like, if you want the $5 coffee, get the $5 coffee if that's a part of, like, what, what you want, right? But then you have to find other ways to cut merciless, mercilessly – in other well areas done. of your life, right? Yeah. Um, so that's his, his his big thing. And then uh, so how that relates to us, I guess, is like once you make the shift to finding ways to invest more, <laughs> like if you actually lay out what you're actually spending money on, you're like, man, there's more than you, more than you think usually so that you can start to bump up what you're investing with Joe or wh whatever it is on Robinhood, whatever it is. Yeah. So. so as you're like laying out all the things, like you have that <clears> – <throat> Excel sheet spread out or whatever it is, like the balance sheet, you have all those things set up. There's going to be other things in your life that you want or like other people want, whether it's like the fancy car or like different trips and whatnot. Like there mm -hmm. are things that you have to say no to. So like how you control um, and like dictate like what you say to, in those different situations, like what's the power and like freedom of saying no in those situations? Mm. That comes back yeah. to the emotion part that yeah. you uh -huh. talked about because that's where people get caught up. <clears throat> I dealt with this a lot whenever I was in school because I, because we talked about like, you know, was I caring about how much money I spent at the bars? I went hard as fuck and I treated myself like a boss. <laughs> I'm not going out Real on talk, Thursdays motherfucker. because your bosses go out on Thursdays. No. So just like saying no to those things or it, it was super easy because I was okay with that because I knew that, you know, eventually I can fucking ball out. But, you know, on a Wednesday night, probably fucking not yeah. or any big time decision like that i'm like in due time like i'm in no fucking rush yeah i mean i think it comes back to financial discipline too i yeah. mean one easy as fuck way to to put it is like if you're you know one about i mean i don't know what it is a couch or something like that like literally save money every month and don't fucking buy the couch until you have it you know you have it in that savings account you know or just I mean? get the shitty couch yeah or, yeah. Just, or just get the 400 like Four hundred dollar couch from Sam's Club. <laughs> or just, or yeah. just get the fifty dollar one off Facebook Marketplace. You know, or the you're grimy. You can sit on the floor for free. Casting yeah. couch. Facts. Fuck yeah. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Going down the fucking rabbit hole with the casting couch. Um, Cole has one. Yeah. <laughs> just I do. He's yeah. not. A, it's not in use proud. anymore. He did, he did not throw yeah. it away. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually the one on. Set. All right, back on the rails. Um, <laughs> you know, the emotional decision stuff. I would say I've been okay at. But there's like early, I would say early in my career, Stephen, I would always think because I didn't have much growing up that I was, that I, that I basically like was entitled, not entitled to it because I had to earn it to buy it, but like almost like you deserve this, right? And there is a point where you need to reward yourself to keep things going. And I think that I just always battled that because it would have been easy to put myself way behind because then when I could afford more I wanted everything. And there was times where the one time with my business and some of my stuff, it squeezed me up a little bit. And I started to realize like, oh, I don't want to feel like this. Because to Cole's point, I have any agility when somebody came to me and said, gee, you want to get in on this business? You want to do this? And I'm like, I got no, I got none left. But you know what's eating it up? 
my first fucking, you know, my first car payment when I had the bins or this or that. Like, it was a bunch of stuff eating it up that to me, after I had them for a period of time, I was like, I would have rather been able to get in this venture with this person, but I don't have that extra two grand a month or whatever the, the number was. And so I think I had to feel it and then process it. And I process, like, I love nice stuff, but they're, it's wearing down on me, meaning like, you know, I'm giving away my, my other, my other, other watch, jeez, my other watch for this fucking guy, this guy, yeah, <laughs> fucking first world problems, yeah. I'm giving away, but it's a watch I really like as like a collector and just something I aspire to have, and, but I'm giving it away, and I haven't worn it since I made the, you know, it's $20,000, since I said I'm going to give this away to an I want apps person, I haven't worn it since, and I wanted to see like, can I detach from things, because they really, it, it's an emotional thing. Like I, I had to like kind of rework my brain and then also using things that are liabilities um, maybe as ways to operate and push that are paid off. So like if it's a watch, it's a car, it's something you paid off. It isn't hurting your lifestyle, but you're using it for motivation. I kind of flipped it on not just being a thing, but something that's represented to keep me pushing every day. But also I'm at a different point in my career. I've been doing this for a really long time. You know what I mean? So some of my ways that I process stuff might be a little different because I've, you know, I've been out here for a while. So, Mm -hmm. but I definitely consider every dollar now that I understand finance, at least to this level, that what this thousand dollars I'm spending on this liability, what does that turn into if I buy a dividend stock with it every month for the next 15 years? Like I understand that that's a lot of money. And so then I think of everything that that's way. That's the switch. Yeah. That's the Once, switch. That's how you evaluate Once I, every decision. You every decision is yeah. evaluated on what can that money be? Because when I spend it, it's gone. When I invest it, I still got it. And so that that's the way that I look at everything now. Mm-hmm. What else you got, buddy? That's yeah. Some good shit. Yeah, so like another one, like kind of just going off of like what you just said, like the Rolex, mm-hmm. um, like the different cars and whatnot. So like coming from your story, like humble beginning, um, blue collar jobs and whatnot, like how do you let, um, or I guess how do you stop all the uh, like greed, ignorance, mm-hmm. different stuff like that, especially like now everybody's got social media everybody's yeah. posting like the fancy things um, but i don't right how do you like stay true to like yourself like your yeah. core values like what you essentially like grew up with like yep. your rules and philosophies so that you know you're mm. still the same Corey gregory with I, that same mentality i bought the things to shine like fucking cash money records i'm not gonna lie about that that's that was my i know trade like that like out the gate i was trying to shine but <laughs> Once I got it, it felt weird, quote unquote, flexing it. Now, I've had this car for fucking four years. You see me around town, it's just my car. You know, that's how I think about it now. And for me to, like, Rolls Royce did a story on me on their app. I never even posted about it. That was a big deal for me because I'm on the owner's app. It's only people that own Rolls Royces. I go on there and fucking my story's on there. With We pulled the fucking car in the gym. It's wet. It's fucking dope as shit probably maybe we ever took nasty (laughs) but it never made it to social media because to me it just felt weird and so because i think even though i thought in my mind that maybe i bought it and look i i I mean rap videos like all that shit like i like the flashy stuff but then it felt like it wasn't all the way about that it was really for me because of Mm -hmm. climbing in through the back door of my fucking horizon you know what i mean so i had a weird switch Whenever I got to a certain point, when I was able to go to the dealership and say, pull that off the fucking showroom, I want that. Um, I don't know. It just felt it felt different. So I think that for me, and I never want the guys that I worked with or been around to feel different about me. They probably do maybe from time to time. Because I had one guy say one time, uh, what I say to him? Something about, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm still fucking grimy. At least I got the gym representing, but like, gee. Your daily's like a rolls, dude. Like shit's like way different. I'm like, yeah, it's way different, but I'm not really that different. Like I, I think the gym being represented at the level that it is has helped that. But the um, yeah, it's that's a that's a tough balance, dude. Did it's you a tough did you go through any like imposter syndrome at any point in your career? Like maybe definitely er, earlier define on. that. Like pretty much like it was kind of like what I explained to you. Mm-hmm. Like when like I first got you know a nice car it was yeah. Like, um, like you feel like you're not supposed to have it. Yeah. You know oh yeah. I mean? did, you, did you ever go through yeah. anything like that's that? That's the internal yeah. blueprint of like you're not you're not you're not, not worthy. Enough, yeah. And I think that that's that's something that it's hard to get. I, I had to well, remember. Most people feel that. I yeah, would say, yeah. So. And that's why I never want people to feel like I know what I did, 
and what I'm willing to do to be at this level. So I'm never going to feel bad about it, but I don't want anybody else to feel bad, Mm -hmm. you know, because then I think it's there for everybody. Everybody's situation is different. Maybe not everybody can go to a certain point, but there's definitely more there if people want it. I found it. You know what I mean? So I don't know that the imposter syndrome is a, is a, is an interesting one, but I know we got to go to a break, right? Yeah. To a break commercial is Troy here. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't think so. so. We'll just do our own commercial. All right. Commercial time. The Roundtable Podcast is actually brought to you this week by a new special sponsor, Melling Farming Organization <laughs> Association. And this week, it's the 21 Days to Yolk City. Corey. Hey, 21 Days to Yolk City. Uh, I appreciate the sponsorship from the Melon Farmers Association organization. And I think that it's one of those things that if you want... <laughs> To grow these melons, <laughs> you gotta uh, really look at. There's four levels of this program. It's on the Corey G Fitness app. We have an amazing stack also on Max Effort that coincides with it. And there's a lot of people out here that just need to bridge the gap from the maniac shit they see at 4 a.m. and what's going on. Maybe they're not going to the gym. Maybe they don't want to go to the gym. Maybe they just want to get started. Like Kyle said and get it rolling and be consistent, this program is for you. 21 days to Yoke City. Man, the graphic is sick. My fucking melons are huge, and Fact. shit's getting real uh, here. Can you list out all the melons that are in 21 days to Yoke yeah, City so, that you, you can find? Yeah, so they, you know when the Melons Farmers Association came to us, they said, listen, we farm honeydew. <laughs> we farm cantaloupe. Yeah. And Cole's favorite, watermelon. <laughs> and so if, you know, and then they came to me and said, gee, if you, you did 21 days, well, tomorrow's 21 days. When you see this, it'll be like 30 some days that we might be able to farm your melons. If you get wow. to fucking 40 Har- harvest. to d- harvest. harvest <laughs> All right. So if you'd like to harvest some melons, go to the Corey G fitness yeah. uh, app and also check out the stack over at maxeffermuscle.com. Back to the show. All right, back to the show. Stephen Chang, what's up? Uh, all right, so one last First off, question. you need your microphone, kid. There we there go. There we go. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Okay. <laughs> um, so, like, from where you guys are sitting today, like, finding success and, like, learning financial literacy and being educated in that, like, and compared to, like, the past specifically, um, like, when you got that first, like, big paycheck, um, like, how has your mindset, like, shifted in the way that you operate? Like, with your money, where you're going to invest, like, different liabilities, stuff like that. Mm. I'll go, uh, so, first off, everything changed for me probably four years ago when, when I would get my money. It wasn't what could I buy. It was, like, how much can I, it literally is how much, how much can I invest? How much income can I buy? Mm-hmm. Back to, like, what Chris Johnson said all the time. So when I started really doing dividend stuff, like it was probably like five years ago, I would say, okay, we'll use $1,000, for example. I know for that $1,000 at one of these stocks that I'm going to create $150 in income a year for me to do nothing. And so I would look at that literally. I would go to Joe's office and come out and say, I'm coming out with a raise this, this month of two grand a year, a raise this month of fucking five grand a year. Right, like that's how I looked at all of it. So I was like looking at how can I squeeze every do- how can I get my overhead so low, pay the shit off, get it to where I can almost invest all of it every month. Mm-hmm. So a lot of things shifted for me when I was able to start looking at it like that, and th- actually buying stuff really wasn't even a thought a whole bunch to be honest. It was more about buying income. So I don't know. Danny? Me? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just thinking about, like, how important it is just to get skin in the game. Like, yeah. just get started no matter how small it is. Just be in the conversation. You've said that multiple times. Like, just from being outside the conversation to being inside the conversation. Oh, for sure. And then I think uh, may, this wasn't, like, the first time. But, like, the you know, having the opportunity to invest into, like, max effort muscle. That one yep. always sticks out to me because – before, uh, I, I can't like cite an example, but like if there was an opportunity that came up, I was never able to take advantage of that opportunity, and that really, really bothered me. And so I made, made it a point to basically always have that, you know, that savings or uh, have enough savings to be able to, you know, partake mm-hmm. in that opportunity the next time it came around. And sure enough, 
being in the conversation, uh, the opportunity finally came up, and then like we were able to take advantage of something like yeah. that. And that's where it really switched for me, I think. Well, and when you're in the room where there's opportunities keep coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you it's, know, yeah, it's crazy. when uh, Trey and Cole put together the NFT project, I was just watching, just watching, waiting. And I was hoping they were going to come to me and say, gee, you want to be involved? I'm like, yep, got some money sitting aside. How we do this? Like, mm -hmm. you want to be ready, especially if it's somebody you believe in so much, right? So you're already working here. You believe in it. You want to be, you want to have skin in the game. You feel different about it. Mm -hmm. But then if it comes by you and you go, I can't, then you're going to be kicking yourself, right? So yep. you're really in. Here's the other thing is a lot of people don't roll with a lot of people that got opportunities all the time. There's always opportunities happening around here. Yep. So you know you're get, if you're in the building, there's going to be a conversation multiple times a year about something. Yep. It's just the way it is. Yeah. It just and it, most people might not realize that. So you, you see a lot of things come across your desk. Some you can partake in, some you can't. But it's like to be able to think about it to get in the game is huge. Yeah. A lot of the times it's up to you and you're – you know how financially disciplined you are you mm. know what i mean if you're you know what are you prioritizing in your life i guess and then how Getting much fucking money gmfb facts <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for me i'm thinking about how can i get my money to make me more money like yeah. what am, what can i like look into next like my next thing of you know obviously we have the nft stuff coming up but now i'm also thinking like all right if i take the money i'm making here i put it into crypto and then that money yep. can make me money to then put into a rental property then that rental property can then go back into the business which will then generate more stuff like that so that's what i i'm consciously thinking about mm -hmm. is how can i take this money put into this uh, make more money and then just can completely redoing it well so. and i had the situation where i got lucky with the housing market you know where i invested podcast advertising money from years ago into an Airbnb, sat on it for two and a half years. It goes up 150 grand. I take the 150 grand and go buy income inside of the stock market. And it's like, so it went from creation to fucking a hard asset to then a paper asset. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know if that's the way you categorize, but it like, it's flowed. Now that one 150 is just in for the rest of my life. So I've turned, you know, from an idea and a process to something that was actually I was really excited about. But then the opportunity showed itself to get out, taking that money, flipping into that and then fucking let it grow for 20 years. And so that, you know, whatever money I put down, because really that's what I needed, that money I put down will now have turned over who knows how many fucking times by the time I'm done. You know what I mean? Or you know, just, you know, getting checks from Joe every month. It's just wild. Now, those aren't things that like happened to me early in my life. This is after I was more established. I could take advantage of things like that. But even when I bought that, I go, this is money that um, was excess because I didn't expect it. Let me put it into something that I think, you know, is a longer term asset. So I didn't just piss it away. And that's one advice I give people like, Right now, the economy is kind of tight, right? There's a lot going on. People can't get stuff. People are, you know, uh, holding on to their money because of gas. There's a lot of shit going on. Not all the time is everything moving. I've had where I got five, six styles of income, and they're all banging. But you got to have at least one or two. You know what I mean? But at some point, if it's only one or two banging, that, that, that's the thing is like when you're setting up all this different stuff, it's like you got to realize that the, watt, the faucet's not always on. You're talking about like <laughs> asset allocation, right? Yeah, yeah or just and also rev revenue streams. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm always trying to set up new ways to buy income and make money yeah. with the understanding that I've seen ones come out of nowhere and they're gone just as fast. Mm -hmm. And it's just yeah. like your game check in the league. One day it quits coming. <laughs> Heard that from every athlete. I thought it was always going to keep coming. Yep. It's not the way it works. Yeah, You got to know that. So I think that's important too. Yeah. So, I don't so know. like, I guess, like, to take it back, like, the found, like the foundation of that, though, is, like, the podcast. Yeah. And so where that came from, though, is doing something that you love to do. Absolutely. And so, like, where the whole mentality changed for me was, like, when I got, when, like, I got paid to do something that, like, I enjoy and I, like, love to do. Absolutely. So, like, when, basically, like, I started shooting your shit, like, yep. your shit in the morning like that. So, like, I think, like, taking it all back from there, like, the money, like, will come because, like, what you were saying, like, basically, like, the podcast shit, like, it didn't start, like, it didn't cost any money to 
start doing no. the podcast shit. Yeah. What you did is you just started podcasting, turned it into something, then it started generating money, and then you see though like where basically my point though is like it all came from doing something I love, doing something you love, and then it turned into X amount of dollars down yes. the fucking road. Ten years from then, it was literally ten years. You know what I mean? So it was like, like on my fourth show. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I think like just when you're doing something that you love to do yeah. and you're just cons- consistently putting in the effort for it, like the money will come. Well, and I was putting a sizable amount of effort in, as you remember, Trey, and yeah. it wasn't generating money for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't my main job. I just really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the way people would respond to it. Yeah. And so then when it did produce money, I thought, I just don't want to piss this away. Let me, I always wanted to have a rental property or have some downtown. I'm like, let me now put it into something that I probably wouldn't put my traditional income into. Because then if I lost it, I just found it anyway. And, th- and then now it's turned over. So it's like, uh, these are really like basic concepts, but I think all the way at the, the base of it is doing something you love, it turns into something, and then are you going to be smart with it once it's there? Yeah. Which Don't. you've done a great job of too. Your fucking investing has been amazing since you've been here, yeah. Trey. People, Trey's a fucking silent killer. Kella, exactly. Kella. Yeah, just don't <laughs> buy dumb shit. Don't buy dumb yeah. shit yeah. all the time. Buy Sometimes assets. you can buy yeah. Just buy assets. Buy assets. assets. We're stacking assets. Hey, so what Nipsey said when he was like 19, yo, homie, yeah. I'm about to buy some assets. I'm about to get money. People are like, what are you talking yeah. about? He's like, right you now, don't want a car? Right you now, don't want a chain? <laughs> I've actually been thinking all money in, no money out. Yeah. That's my that's mindset it. right now. I'm telling you. All money's going to assets. Yeah. Get income. <laughs> Liabilities ain't. I, I ain't never heard of her. Cool. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. Damn. I wish I knew that shit when I was a lot younger. I'm a little jealous of you guys because you just got a head start on that. Yeah. I just didn't really have a clue to. I, even though I read that book when I was pretty young, still didn't really apply it all the way to what was a little bit older. So. Yeah. This is yeah. like the one book I'll constantly like revisit. Yeah. It's like it, this was the first book I've read it probably maybe a year or two ago, and now mm. I'm rereading it again. Oh uh, yeah, I've it, just, it listened puts you to in it. Check. Listened to it or read it probably at least ten or fifteen times at least over my career, maybe more, a lot. He's a fucking G. Yeah. What else you got, Steve? I like it. So yeah, we'll have some uh, fun questions for everyone. Yeah. Just kind of cool. like a little more laid back. So, yeah. So I told Stephen this is inspired by Danny asks a question slash small arms says. <laughs> <laughs> it is slash Steven Simon says. Yeah. So we'll start with you, Cole. Um, yes. So, as somebody that played football when you were younger, you know, you were big into lifting weights. Um, so, as a linebacker specifically, okay. you know, you got to be physical. <laughs> yes. So, if you, you know, you're set up in that Oklahoma drill, it's you, you got to run through somebody else. And it could be, you know, another lineman, another uh, linebacker, receiver. Yeah. Who would it be and why is it Taylor Luan? Taylor <laughs> Luan. <laughs> Man, I don't know. I Honestly, I could probably, like, beat him because I'm faster than him. But if I had to take him head on on the boards – I think I, I think I could hold my own, you know, because I would I would have the lower center of, center of gravity. True so facts. I think I could hold up. Now would it be amazing? Probably not. <laughs> but if I had someone to go like head to head, like full on, full with, confidence, you're blasting I, through. I, I, I want to pick a running back. Honestly, I, I would one. I would like to go. <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, Derrick Henry. <laughs> Fuck yeah, no! You, I you know, you know what? You know, I want no part of Derrick Henry, <laughs> you know bro. Fuck I, I would. I, I maybe not Derrick Henry. Maybe like Mark <laughs> yeah. Ingram. Maybe not Derrick <laughs> like Henry. Maybe, maybe, not. maybe not Derrick. Yeah. Yeah. So like someone who's just like kind of the same size, but still way fucking bigger than me. Because like the dog in me says, you know what? I just want to like know what it feels like one time. Yeah. Like what? What does that feel like? Like. Am I gonna die? Probably not. Could I get a concussion? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, but I think my neck's strong enough. I I could handle my own. <laughs> Any quarterbacks that you would like to uh, call out? Like, if you get a free hit, like, you move right off that, you know, left tackle and just him. Quarterbacks? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <sighs> the GOAT? Nope. Uh, fucking, it was probably, like, that one Penn State quarterback from a few years ago. Whenever they beat they beat Ohio State, I forget his name. Obviously, it's irrelevant. Obviously, he's not that important. Yeah. But I would like to fucking <laughs> beat that guy. Jeez. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Yeah. Cole <laughs> wants to amazing. blast him. Blindside. Blindside, yeah. That's yeah. fucking hilarious. <laughs> All right, and then we'll switch to Danny here. So we know you small. lift, you know, you're small arms, Danny. <laughs> so, you know, you're always doing curls. You're kind of skipping legs sometimes. So, like, how does, oh! that, how does that lifestyle, you know, like come into play <laughs> in the event of a bear attack? <laughs> <laughs> 
I, got, I mean, headlock, right? I guess that's the, my yeah. first move. I got to go for the headlock, get on his back, and and pray. I guess <laughs> squeeze him, <laughs> squeeze him with your bicep. Yeah, squeeze him with my yeah, bicep. Danny, do you think there's a correlation between leg size and bicep size? That's a t- that's a tough one. Because yeah. wouldn't you say like if your legs are stronger, then you can curl more, kind of? If you if you <laughs> lunge, yes. If you don't lunge, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fair, right? And I do lunge. Do you calves? <laughs> Uh, we the cavalry, yeah, yeah, with the cavalry every week, yes. There you go, yeah, the Cavs cavalry. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> it's really spiraled from here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, keep it going. Steve. Yeah, then, going so good. we'll just go to you, Corey. Yep. Um, so you're somebody that's like, you know, been around like, um, big names in the game. Mm-hmm. The biggest one that comes to mind is Arnold. Like sure. you were, you've yeah, talked yeah. about stories where you smoked stogies with him. Mm-hmm. Um, was it Christmas morning or? Uh, that time. Yeah, it's like uh, usually he has his party like a week before. Yeah, Christmas. so for like a big name like that, like who else is on that list that you want to smoke with? Mm. Cigars. Well, I would love to smoke a cigar with Andrew Carnegie. I'll tell you what, that guy has been so impactful. Obviously, he's dead since like 19, I don't know, 20 or something. But uh, yeah, he's on my like, you have those like dead or alive type things. What's interesting, Stephen, and I said this before on the podcast, I've got to interact with a lot of people I've looked up to, which is pretty uncommon like personally and so but Carnegie's one of those ones I think I'd like to like get around Mark Cuban too he's always been a person that I've always like because he's kind of fucking fiery yeah. kind of fuck with him too um, but I would say like yeah if I could sit down and really understand those guys were the base of him and Rockefeller were the Bezos and you know Steve Jobs of that day and the way that they put together this country was uh, between steel and oil it was just so wild so yeah i would love but the development that he gave to the world through napoleon hill is literally timeless forever and so i would love to know like when you started writing those books and he started interviewing you like because he couldn't even see what it turned into right he didn't he never saw it, like that it it changed an entire and created a whole development industry. I just think it's really, really interesting. So I would have loved to, you know, chat with him on the mindset of like why he felt so, you know, uh, passionate and inclined to create things like that. Um, I was trying to think of some someone else though I did smoke a cigar with though I really enjoyed was Tim Ferriss. He was at Arnold's one time and that was a cool conversation because it's like talking to a computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very, but he was like interviewing me the whole fucking time that about squatting and shit, and that was really cool. Some I didn't anticipate when uh, when I went there one time, but yeah, go to Trey. Thanks, yeah, good then, question. Uh, for Trey here, you know, we know you're always working with like you got your new NFT project. You have uh, Pablo the Bear. So like, what's your spirit animal? What's my spirit <laughs> animal? Yes. And is it Pablo? I would say my spirit animal. Yeah, I, I would say it has to be Pablo the Bear. Because yeah, I would say it has to be him because, um, because it kind of because the Pablo the Bear the rep the representation behind that is obviously the Kanye West called Dropout Bear, mm-hmm. and so to take it back, I would say yeah, that is the spirit animal. That's me. where it came from originally, yeah. huh, Trey? That yeah. makes sense. I don't think yeah, just like what that album represents and everything. I think what that's is the spirit. Would you say that's uh, Trayvon spirit animal? What about the air? Because I also think you know Mike Tyson with the tiger. Yeah, I think a possible a, really a tiger yeah. could also possibly a good association. Like an possibly exotic one. cat. Yeah. yeah. Any st- any style of exotic cat would definitely have to be the other spirit animal, if not the spirit animal. Mm. Because what's your pick with that though? There's so many. Right? Savannah. <laughs> you want something that like a Savannah cat. Savannah. I want something that like it could kill you. <laughs> of course you, you do. just know that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, like, it, like I like it could like if it wanted could, to. Yes. Like it, it could. Is college dropout the one that they were doing the documentary on? Yep. Like that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. That was so fucking epic. Yeah. And just how hype he was, where he's walking in Rockefeller and he's playing it for everybody. They're not even paying attention Nobody, to yeah. him. It's, they're he's like, it to the rece- they're like, he's playing it to the receptionist. receptionist. Hey, and the receptionist get, is. It was a cassette listen. tape, still, wasn't it? Yeah. He's like, get the fuck out of here, Kanye. <laughs> get the fuck out of here with that. Like that shit. That shit was inspiring because. Once again, his belief is so deep. It's the conviction in himself. The conviction is next level, bro. That's why I fuck with it. Although so piggybacking I, off of like that conviction to yeah. the next level, like what's everybody's like go to song before like the big heavy squat or like deadlift? Like what song makes you like, you know, be fully convinced like I'm gonna take this no matter what? Like that gets you uh, like hyped up, like juiced up to the next mm-hmm. level. Cool. The one that's just popping in my head right now because I think this is like. 
you know, back in the day, whenever I was just trying to grow the traps and the triceps, <laughs> ASAP <laughs> Ferg work was my go-to song. That's a that's a wet one. That was my fucking go-to. Whenever he comes in with the hoo, 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 that, <laughs> that shit's hard. Yeah, you feel that one, right? Yeah, I haven't actually bumped that in a minute, so but it's come to my mind. That's probably what I would choose if we were in the gym. <laughs> that's I like I, it. That's what I turn on. Uh, for me, I think I'm going something. <laughs> or you go ahead, go, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck myself. <laughs> Wait, right. hold on. Hey, hold on. Do you see Meek Mill's workout clip? <laughs> no, I, I sent it to him. Is he a dog? The one where he's. He oh was yeah, yeah. He was getting it now. <laughs> I said he needs to get. But you didn't answer the question. Yeah, he needs some help. <laughs> yeah. He needs some help. He All needs right, to get on 21 Days New York City. Uh, I'm just thinking about Limp Biscuit in, uh, in, oh, in general. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know, like Break Stuff maybe is, is a good one. From uh, Limp Biscuit? Limp Biscuit? Yeah. Limpy Biscuit? Or there's, uh, what is it I called? like that show. Been really on it lately. Limp Biscuit doesn't get enough love. Nah, they, L- no, you're right. There's one called Living It Up. I like that one too, but anyway. I think Rage Limp- always gives some good fucking, yeah. Rage Against the Machines got some great ones. This one and then... Um, the rap N word, which is from uh, Nipsey Hussle, is probably one of my favorites because he's talking about basically how no one else is like him, and I feel the same fucking way. So when that shit hits, I just think, "Give me the fucking bar." I told Tyler to put it on this morning. I was like, "Can I get the rap N word?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't pull it, and I almost ripped my thumb off, so it didn't work. But okay. but that's those are my two go tos. Trayvon. Um, Meek Mill as well. I would say probably. Uh, the Oodles Noodles Babies. Yeah, I fuck with that. Yeah. Mm. Song's wild. That's I a think banger, the, dude. I that's think the emotion song. in Meek the Mill. Emo- the emo- like the, that's what I like about that song. Fuck the emotion yeah. in that song. I fuck with that song too. That whole album is actually really fucking good. Oh, yeah. Him coming out of prison and dropping that shit and it being that good, so fucking. It was like pockish, bro. I would also consider it why the Eagles won the Super Bowl. I agree Besides with that. Besides that, they were hidden whenever... You're playing it G- fed Drew's, it. Yeah, dude. Drew, it fed it for sure. Yeah. Because when Pac came out of jail, he dropped a yeah, double Philly. album. Yeah. Yeah. That dude. definitely. Yeah, that that helped huge, it. That helped a ton, huge bro. Impact. Helped a ton. But that's the same type of shit I remember. I'm telling you, like Pac came out, dropped a double album, and people went fucking crazy. They didn't have him for a minute. He came out, dropped the the dual cassette, the dual CD, <laughs> which I probably lost and broke and rebought six times in my life before it turned to fucking digital. But couldn't get enough of it. It was unbelievable, and I think I think he he fed the same type of thing when he came out, and it was a banger like that. It was pretty good. Um, did we hit everybody? Stephen, what's your song? Uh now you kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> yeah, um, that's perfect. what I do. I think like <laughs> if we're like thinking like um, like attitude going into next week, like today I missed that 495 deadlift, so I kind of like need a comeback season going. Like you know, like 3:30 okay. when I'm like out the. You know, out the house, in the car, I'll toss on Cinderella Man by Eminem. All right. A little throwback. Right. Can I get that, like, comeback feeling? Like, mm-hmm. you're walking in the uh, stadium. All Fans right. are, like, booing at you. You need that comeback. Oh. Okay. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Fuck yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. We good? Yeah. Yeah, this is good. Steven, thanks. Uh, where can people find you on social media? Um, It's my go-to is uh, Instagram. It's uh, <laughs> at underscore Stephen Chang. Um, yeah. For anybody on Snapchat that wants to out me out there, <laughs> no, it's uh, okay. not small. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, do you got a girlfriend right now? Yeah. I don't. I don't. All right, he's available, lady. Lady. Yeah, yeah. Hey. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you. Hey, all the mo you honeys. All the mo you honeys. Hit him on Snapchat. He's gonna be Doctor Chang. It's at S Chang C H A N G underscore forty two. It's yeah. a little throwback from the middle school days, but uh, <laughs> still works. We're still taking applications. Yeah, so <laughs> moms. I bet you are. Yeah. You should change it to S Chang Daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, w- hey, you're about to be a doctor too, right? That's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, 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 we are course. taking applications, <laughs> ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to talk assets yeah. and investment right here. Hey, I'm yeah. your dad. There you go. Dr. Daddy Chang, study, anat- All right. study anatomy. <laughs> Thanks for coming here. <laughs> this is the shit show we call the round table. I'm your boy, Corey G, <laughs> at Small Arms, Danny, at Trey, Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak, Stephen Chang. Thanks for stopping by. Thank Brought you to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. We out. <laughs> <laughs>